I was just joking backstage uh, where you could not hear that that's the Ultra Live theme song. Welcome. It must be a Thursday. Maeve Brooks, how are you on this fine, fine Thursday afternoon? I'm doing great. Are you? Um, yeah, I, it's a good week. It's a good day. I mean, I know we always talk about weather, which is super boring. Not good weather, but, you know, I'm inside dry and warm, which is good because it's it's gotten super cold again. What? After, How? Yeah, Why? It was cold. I don't know. It's, it's really disappointing. Um, but, you know, and my dad insists of keeping the fire on and i'm like it's it's a whole thing because it's cold outside but then it's 71 day then it's back to 40 and then i keep going from shorts to a jacket it's just really (laughs) confusing but other than that i'm doing great it's been a good week (laughs) awesome well everybody welcome in uh wherever you're joining us from on the altar live show we have a very special guest we're going to get to in just a couple minutes but as we typically do with the beginning of the Ultra Live show, you and the rest of your family and your friends up the street know how much Maeve and I are TV mavens. We are TV uh, aficionados, and we yes. wanted to bring you our official Alter Live show weekly TV recommendation. Last week was mine, and I honestly don't remember what I chose. I Do think you- it was... I think it was Shit's Creek. Oh, it was Shit's Creek. You are correct. Yeah. Um, S C H. S C H. Shits. Yes, we it's a we are a family show around we here. We are a family. family. Uh, so, bringing you today's recommendation mm-hmm. is the one and the only Maeve Brooks. Maeve, what do you got for the lovely Ultra Live fam? So this is one that actually got canceled after two seasons, which was kind of dead devastating because i would say it's a pretty underrated show Hmm. you can find it on netflix um it's it was written by tracy wigfield who often wrote for tina fey and Kaling. so you already know that's kind of a gonna be a fun time it's called great news dude oh my gosh yes okay yes okay i love that show yes it was only what a Mm -hmm. season and a half two seasons yeah i think it was like two seasons and so I found it. It's definitely a hidden gem on Netflix. Um, I think it would have gone on. Like, I just feel like it was one of those things where it's probably on at the wrong time. Uh, you know, maybe not the right network. Who knows? Hmm. Got canceled after two seasons, but it's hilarious. It's about um, this young woman who is working at, like, a local news station. But then her mom gets hired as an intern. And her mom is played by Andrea Martin. So so if you've ever, you guys ever seen My Big Fat Greek Wedding, she's Aunt Vula, who's, you know, my fave. Aunt Vula. The, you know, the one who's like, you. that's okay. I make <laughs> lamb. <laughs> you want you want lamb? I have even pot. Yeah, exactly. A bunt. A bunt, <laughs> a bunt yes. Yeah. Classic. So she's in that. She plays the mom. And she's definitely like a helicopter mother, smother mother, that classic trope. But it's just hilarious because the mom is the intern and she's kind of just bugging her daughter. But also, you know, wanting her daughter to succeed. So the, the mother's like interacting with the boss and the mom and the girl's like, no, mom, why are you doing that? But it's just funny. It's a lot of antics. Oh, yeah. And it's pretty family friendly. Like we all watch it as a family. I mean, you never it had to be on. It was on like regular tv so it's not one of those streaming things where anything goes so it's pretty tame if you want to watch it with your family it's a fun one i think it should have gone on for more seasons i agree uh, and I, really good. tina fey actually produced it right yes i think so i th- it was definitely under that kind of umbrella of tina fey those tina fey works you can definitely tell by the humor that you're like okay that's like yeah there's a there's a lot of a lot of snappy back and forth stuff there's actually a lot like horatio sands is in it Mm -hmm. um yeah kenneth from uh 30 rock is in it can never remember that dude's name oh my gosh i love him jack mcbrayer yeah there we go um i think tracy morgan is in one of the episodes is that correct maybe i don't i know i definitely know horatio sands is in it i'm trying to remember who else but that guy um john michael higgins mm-hmm. he's the guy who does who's, he's like the the diva anchor like news anchor and he's the guy in um best in show and he's always hilarious rest in rest in peace man that guy passed away and it was a huge no no, no that was that was uh willard what's his oh, name? i thought i thought john michael higgins fred willard did but i thought john michael higgins passed away too did he die hold on google's gonna tell me this just oh my you gosh. stall for time john... sorry guys <laughs> Michael, this is the power of the internet right here. Uh, okay, no, he's still alive. Okay, okay, all right, cool. all right, all right. I was like, I knew Fred Willard died, but okay. Oh, he's married to he's married to Margaret Welsh. Huh, interesting. 
Interesting. Huh. You, things you never knew. You learn something new every day. And we should just have a Google of the day segment. All right. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna clear our faces away. So, um, over the last couple of weeks here in the Alter Live Show, we've been talking about uh, a whole lot of things, particularly to do with getting started with Alter Live. We've gone through a lot of kind of the technical things, how to use the show or how to use the pr platform, what it's going to be good for. We've talked to guests and all of those other things. And the last two weeks in particular, Maeve and I have been walking through the onboarding process and mm -hmm. what it's like to actually get uh, you as a church or if you are working with a church from kind of the ether into a full, amazing, wonderful, engaged church platform. But we're just two faces uh, on a screen. You don't even know where we are. Uh, and we could be figments of your imagination. And we <laughs> wanted to bring on another figment of your imagination right now. Um, he's I can see him in the green room. He just laughed. So I got a, I got a gold star <laughs> for that one. Um, we wanted to bring on the one and the only David Allen, who has worked with a number of churches. He has... Uh, it seems like a globe-trotting ministry. Uh, he has been taking care of uh, of tech, and he's got a really, really awesome history. So, without further ado, Mr. David <laughs> Allen, welcome to the Alter Live Show. Woohoo! Hey, it is <laughs> great to be here. <laughs> it, it is so good to have you. Uh, now, before we get started and all of those things, so you're actually you're not in the United States right now. You are on the other side of the pond. Where are you? Just outside of London. Um, I have a home here. Um, I've lived here for 35 years. Okay. Um, uh, we're in the process of moving back to America, um, which we started in 2019. <laughs> and um, uh, I'm from the Bo I'm from the Boston area originally, which okay. is you know how I've met um, Steph and a lot of the guys there um, at Alter Live. But um, I think it was on March 13th in 2020. I was mm. um, I was home. I was home in Boston and. Um, I got on this uh, British Airways flight to London, landed, went down, and, and noticed in the airport there was nobody there. I thought, wow, <laughs> <"That's kinda> weird. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Wait, what's what's going on there? <laughs> and I came down into passport control. There was this big TV up there that said Trump closes America. <laughs> oh I was my like, God. I grabbed the people at British Airways and said, "What do you mean Trump closes America? He can't close America. <laughs> He's the president, but he can't close the bloody country, can he?" They said he closed the country. Oh. <laughs> and you were on the last flight. <laughs> I oh was like, my gosh. oh my God, what do I do? Oh so, my goodness. Well, so, uh, so but anyway, I, mean, I got moved here 35 years ago with a, an American software company, and I just ended up staying. One thing led to another. And uh, my whole life is in the tech business. And um, so I, I view technology kind of like the Apostle Paul viewed tent making. Okay, you got to do something to make money. So um, it turned out to be pretty good, you know. <laughs> I was <laughs> some of it turned out really good, actually. Um, I, I was the fourth employee here in the UK of a company called Cisco Systems. Oh, I know Cisco. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, today it's like this global powerhouse of um, of, a, of a company. So um, yeah, yeah. So um, I lived here. Um, but I go back and forth a lot, so and it's funny that you, you you mentioned the going back and forth a lot because um, I have everything in both places. So um, <laughs> I have um, a home and a car and all my clothes and everything. And so um, uh, last Thursday I was in Philadelphia. I had a series of meetings all day, and then I flew over the Thursday night, and I showed up at the um, at the British Airways counter, and um, the woman said, oh, "Where's your luggage?" I said, oh, "I don't have any luggage." Uh, you know, lights go off. Are, are you a terrorist? <laughs> Does the big dog look like a terrorist? <laughs> you know, I mean, you got to be kidding. They said, but you have no luggage. I said, I don't need any luggage. <laughs> so um, immediately this bloke comes out and searches everything. And um, he says, you have two passports. I said, oh, God, I'm a citizen of two countries. Oh, my God. <laughs> I got, I got hauled into this room and interrogated, and it was like, all I'm doing is flying home. But you are home. Well, the other home. Oh, well. <laughs> home number two. <laughs> He's like, really? Home number two. Anyway, so that was pretty funny. 
Oh goodness. So okay, let's let's back up a little bit. Uh, I want to hear kind of the who you are, kind of the origin story, as we always ask all of our guests. Um, tell everybody on the Ultra Life fan. By the way, Josh, good morning or good afternoon. I saw Josh logging in. We're we're streaming on Twitch for one of the first times here as well. So hello everybody oh, on cool. Twitch. Um, so let's back up. Who I saw in kind of the notes you gave us. Yeah, as we rewind, you you spent forty five years in the tech business, but even back before then, who are you? Like where? How did you get to where you are? <laughs> I, I'm like the single worst example of planning and goal setting. In the <laughs> there's, there's no one who has fewer goals than me. <laughs> Great. Uh, I don't know. Talk, talk, maybe. talk to my 12 year old son. He's got no goals either. So maybe that. <laughs> oh, he's ahead of me. <laughs> he's way ahead of me. So, so I grew up in North Kingston, Rhode Island, and um, I only wanted one thing growing up, and that was to get out. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so um, I'm part of a really big Irish family on the East Coast, but you know, there you go. Um, but uh, anyway, so I love my family, but there we go. So I went to the University of Colorado in Boulder, um, which was one of the four original sites of the ARPANET, which became the Internet. And um, yeah, lots of people say, why don't you have a degree in computer engineering? And I say, because well, there wasn't one. Um, <laughs> so I took all the courses you could take. Um, turned into a programmer, uh, ended up leaving after my master's degree, went to Colorado, uh, not to Colorado, to uh, California, worked for a bunch of different companies, um, all high tech startups. Um, and of course, everything was then. Um, and um, biggest mistake I made in college, biggest is I was a, a resident advisor in the dormitories at the University of Colorado because, uh, you know, I was working my way up. And um, I had a student when I was a junior, he said, he came to me at the end of the year, said, David, I got to drop out. I said, I can't take this anymore. He said, um, I, th this friend of mine is starting this computer company in um, San Jose, and I've got to go, um, and I've got to go hang out, and uh, I don't know what's going to happen. And um, he said, man, you got to come with me. And I was like, oh, man, I can't do that. I got to do this. I got to do this. His name is Steve Wozniak. Oh, just oh just God. the Woz. That's all. <laughs> I was like, I could have had one percent of Apple. Oh, oh you could have you could have oh bought your own God. island right now. God. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But uh, anyway, that's you know, so another funny little story in the background. But um, and then um, I was in San Diego working for a company called Inter Interactive, which is a Unix-based software company, and um, they ended up buying a company in London um, that was that we had done a lot of business with. And um, I was one of four partners in the company. And the other guys came into me one afternoon. They said, uh, you're single, right? I said, uh, much as I can tell, yeah. <laughs> and you have a passport, right? Uh, yep. Okay, you're going to London tonight. I said, where? <laughs> <laughs> London, Ontario? There. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, they said, oh, they, they speak English. They have funny looking money, but they have McDonald's. So they'll be all right. <laughs> you'll be all right. Um, they, they drive on the wrong side of the road, but yeah, you'll get used to it. Um, 45 years later, I'm, uh, or 35 years later, I'm still uh, <laughs> driving on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> um, which is always weird when I come home because I go back and forth quite a bit. And um, so I'll be driving here and then I'll hop on a plane, get to like Boston, hop off, get in the car. And I meet this happens to me. I I'm like a legend at the Avis counter in the at Logan Airport. <laughs> I, I continuously drive into the wrong lane. <laughs> And, um, oh my gosh. <laughs> and, and I, I can't figure out, like, have, have you ever tried to go through the toll booth sideways to the wrong side? No, oh, it's, never. It's, David, I can honestly say I've never tried to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Try to go through a toll booth in the wrong lane with traffic oh coming at you. Oh, it's like a fantastic experience. Oh, yeah. Anyway, I did that at the Avis counter in, in Logan. Oh, they're still talking about it. but. <laughs> 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 anyway, so so that's me. I'm quirky, weird, um, and um, I, I became a Christian when I was 17 um, mm -hmm. and followed the Lord and got discipled and was doing lots of things. But by after about six years, um, I just could not cope with the hypocrisy hmm. of the whole thing and basically de deconstructed my faith. So. I didn't, you know, now we got a name for this. It's like a name. <laughs> um, but I just walked away in sin. But, you know, that's the real truth. <laughs> um, you ain't wrong. And, and, was and was gone out of the church and Christianity for 20 plus years. Hmm. Um, but um, 
I came back through the charismatic Catholic movement, which was mm. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and one thing led to another, and I got real involved with an Australian church here in London uh, called Hillsong. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I got really involved with Hillsong, and you know, we have really good music and stuff like that. <laughs> um, and uh, did their mobile app for them. And uh, it was at a Hillsong conference in 2009. Um, that I met this guy from a, a church in Oklahoma City called Life Church. His name is Craig Rochelle. Um, and, and in 2009, he was like nobody. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and and he got farmed out to our Surrey campus, which only had like 300 people in it. So you see these giant Hillsong crowds. Well, it's not like that everywhere. <laughs> um, and uh, he said, I bet I'm the only American in the room. I said, no, there's another one. <laughs> so he said, oh, can you come down and talk to me? And he said, uh, we're going to build this app called the U version Bible app. And I said, uh, hey, fantastic. That's really good. And he said, you're in the software business. I said, yeah, that's true. Um, can you help us? I said, well, I said, you're not shy about asking for anything, are you? He said, no, especially money. <laughs> and, um, and, um, so uh, I got involved with it. I, I'm like, if, if you become friends with me or see me on the, um, the U version app, I'm the only person you're going to see where it says on this app since mine says 2009. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we didn't even make it like available for another couple of years. But <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Uh, so um, in 2017, they asked me to do some hosting for them because uh, I've been doing engineering and um, all that other uh, other stuff. And um, so I got involved with um, becoming a host. And then within snapping my fingers, I became one of the three global community leaders wow. for them. So I learned a lot about um, hosting and how that works and how, you know, how you have to do what you got to do to engage with people because, um, you know, they, they had a very particular formula for what they were doing. And um, about a year and a half ago, I, I stay, I still very involved with the U version app, but I, I can't do the hosting because I just didn't have enough time. Um, so I handled all their uh, their 30. They have 90 services a week on the net, and I did 30 of them, which is Europe, Middle East, and Africa, hmm. um, because I'm like perpetually awake. Um, and crazy. <laughs> another problem. <laughs> and crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a crazy big dog, but there we go. Um, <laughs> and um, <laughs> so um, uh, I was at the premier digital conference uh, about like a year and a half ago in London. And um, Stephanie was launching the the, um, the company uh, Alter Live, and um, and I said uh, I said I got to hear about this thing. And so she asked, you know, who are you? Um, I said, well, I'm a big dog, and uh, you like me. <laughs> Very friendly. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Very friendly. But <laughs> anyway, um, so we just started talking. One thing led to another. Um, I am quite fortunate in that I do know a lot about internet working, having been one of the original Cisco guys here um, mm -hmm. and done a lot of, um, I, I've been through two IPOs um, uh, in New York on NASDAQ, you know, for companies that I've been part of building up and starting. So that that's enabled some uh, nice tent making um, <laughs> along the way. Um, and uh, so Stephanie and I just got started talking, and so she showed me the concept. Um, at the beginning, it was not ready for prime time, and it had all kinds of difficulties. So I I've helped them a little bit with the inner networking side of it. You know, mm. here's here's how some of this stuff needs to work. And uh, I have to say, I think today it's like a 50 times better uh, platform than it was before. Hmm. Um, but the thing I was really, really interested in is the ability to chat using your voice and using your video um, mm. with people to really interact because um, at Life Church we, we gained a remarkable level of connection with people just by texting, you know, mm. um, which is amazing. So, um, and, and the, the demand for people connecting, I, I'm real mad crazy data guy so i follow a lot of what the people at barna do um in terms of their reports and their uh, studies and uh, you know stuff that's out there and um you know clearly um people are connecting digitally mm -hmm. and uh, and want to connect 
digitally, but it doesn't have to be just digitally, but um, people who, you know, I've got loads of friends over the net um, that I'd never actually physically met in yep. person. Mm -hmm. um, and, but you're not supposed to say that. Um, you, you can't admit to that, but um, it's true. It's okay. This is, <laughs> this is a safe space right here. We're, we're amongst friends. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, so I mean that you know that was it. You know, um, it was um, you know that's that's how we met, got started, and um, so we uh, we connected with this church in Springfield, Ohio, which is where we've uh, moved to. Um, so I needed to be on the East Coast time zone as far west as I could live in as far west as I could live is Ohio. Hmm. Um, uh, so my wife has uh, kids and family there. And for me, moving back to America after 35 years, um, it, it was kind of weird, actually, because to hmm. me, everywhere in America seems about like everywhere else. Um, hmm. Except, I mean, the South is, um, uh, I couldn't live there. Cause Which is where I am. I'm in Florida. So yeah, I, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Florida's really not the South. Yeah, it's like I, this little I, peninsula. I was in. I, I met my wife and kids in Atlanta, so I lived there for about six years. I I understand totally. Yeah, I couldn't live in Atlanta. I have to run through there. If I have to go to the airport, you know, I just leg it through the airport. Yeah. Well, and, it, and it, the airport's like six miles long too. So good luck with that. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's the problem when you're from New England. You just can't cope with it. But, but there you go. Anyway, absolutely. Um, but. You know, all the stores are the same and the restaurants are the same and, you know, the, the, the same phone companies, uh, you know, it's pretty much the same almost everywhere. So for me, um, Ohio was, it was just fine. And, and I like living in Ohio. I mean, it's really good because mm -hmm. I like cold. Unlike you, Maeve, I really love cold. <laughs> so, um, yeah. but, uh, I've heard Ohio is very cold. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. It was like 20 below zero a couple of weeks ago. I was like, whoa. Uh, however, wow. I get to go cross country skiing, which is cool. I like that. That is cool. Oh, that I, I'm, I'm originally from Michigan. So Ohio is to me that state down south that oh, I really don't like. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Real yeah. close. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Uh, I, I totally get all the coldness. Um, Maeve, before Maeve asks you kind of the, the next question that we had on our list here, I, I wanted to back up real quick. You said you talked about uh knowing people and kind of learning about them especially in the U version area but also now moving into ultra live area what is oh, yeah. the difference in kind of your church history that you've seen in the evolution of the tech space and the engagement space it's going back to you know the 2000s early 2000s mid 2000s up to now is it becoming more accepted is it turning into another worship wars thing where you can actually have services online and people are accepting it or is it still kind of a fringe thing well um last summer i um uh, one of the churches i'm involved with is a church in cincinnati called uh crossroads church and mm -hmm. it's we're one of the top 10 biggest churches out there and um so I met um, this guy a, a year ago, about a year ago, named Scott Galloway. He's, um, he, I think he's the dean of the business school at NYU in New York. Um, mm. And he wrote this book called Post-COVID, uh, From Crisis to Opportunity. And the interesting thing about the book is he talks about the fact that about June or July last year, the, um, it, it, and he was sort of drawing a parallel between business and the church. And in business, he makes the thesis, and a whole lot of other people agree with him now, that by about June or July last year, the what we, we have lived in what's called the brand cycle for 75 years. Mm. So everything's brand, 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 you know, and all the business schools teach you to market the brand, sell the brand, oh, build yeah. the brand. And he said, it's gone, history. Hmm. Um, and he said, from here on out, there's we're in the product cycle hmm. because people don't give a stuff about a brand, but they do want products. And he makes the point that, you know, uh, COVID didn't make Amazon happen. Amazon was well down the road. Oh, yeah. uh, the, the big box retailers were all bankrupt by 2019 anyway. You know, Sears, JCPenney and uh, J. Crew and, you know, all these companies, they were dead. Um, and the only company, it seems, has made any uh, attempt to mold itself for the way things are going is Target. Mm. And bizarrely enough, um, but the parallel between them and the church is is pretty exact. And I, I've built this website called TheEngagingCycle.com. Uh, it's just called EngagingCycle.com. But my thesis uh, w w um, in my discussions with Scott at NYU is 
that for up 65 years, the church has been through what's called the broadcast cycle. So it broad, everything was broadcast, broadcast, broadcast. Hmm. And, um, and by then, we've changed to now what's called the engaging cycle. So if, if you are doing anything in a church that doesn't involve engaging people, you're mm. toast. Yep. Um, you know, it, it's not going to happen. So mm. the, the, the change, um, and I mean, if you take a look, I mean, our little microcosm of Springfield in Ohio, uh, two years ago, at 200 churches. Today, it's got 100 churches. Hmm. Um, oh. But I mean, that that's across the board in the U.S. You know, that's everywhere. I mean, life churches, church attendance way, way down. Everybody's crossroads is way down. Um, but th that's just a fact. You know, that's just a reality. So, um, but that doesn't mean people don't need Jesus. Hmm. It doesn't mean people don't want to engage. Um, you know, you know, Barna uh, just went through this thing where they, uh, must have been three or four months ago, when they talked about the number of people displaying um, uh, clinical mental illness yep. signs in the in the general mm -hmm. population. It's yep. like forty two percent of the people, yep. <laughs> almost like one out of every two people. And the thing I tell senior ministers about at churches, I say you need to understand something. Those people go to your church, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not only that. Those people work at your church. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> and, um, and 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 there's some really simple stuff, some really simple solutions to a lot of this, but all of it revolves around engagement hmm. yeah. and engaging with the people. Because um, it, it, what what possibility does our social welfare system have of dealing with people who are mentally ill? <laughs> Not a lot. Nope. Um, and the, the, the numbers are roughly the same here in Europe um, as as they are in the U.S. I mean, it's not much different. And it's not much different in French, German, Spanish, Italian, and every other language here in Europe. Hmm. Um, it's it's pretty much the same because I have to work in other countries and other languages. And and I can tell you it's pretty much the same. Um, hmm. So we, we, we as born-again Christians have something inside us called the Holy Spirit. Um, that the other guys don't have. I mean, I wouldn't want to be out there without the Holy Spirit. Oh yeah, God. I mean, what a nightmare life that would be. Oh yeah. Um, totally. And so we need to engage with people. And so the altar platform takes to the next level the capacity to engage with people. Hmm. I mean, it's it really is pretty much that simple. Hmm. Um, and um, but it's really new and it's really different. So. There, you know, uh, you can have all these, um, you know, conferences with each other and if people sitting in the same row can talk to each other. People don't do that. Hmm. Um, uh, well, I mean, they don't yet um, because we're in church. You don't do that stuff in church. <laughs> I mean, you don't talk. Come on. <laughs> you listen. <laughs> and um, however... The people between 18 and 35, they're like, what? I'll talk what oh, I yeah. want. <laughs> um, but I mean, old people like me, because like I'm older than dirt. I'm like way older than you guys. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, people in my age, oh, my, talk in oh, yeah. church? You mm -hmm. must be joking. And um, so we're getting more and more and more younger people going on. And they're like, oh, look at him, all this. And um, so, you know, that that's why... I've taken the time to, um, you know, sort of organize us at fellowship so that we can do a much better job at making that transition happen. Hmm. Um, awesome. Because the transition part of what makes altar work has basically mm -hmm. almost nothing to do with altar. Hmm. Interesting. Which is interesting. Yeah. 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 Uh, Maeve, Maeve, go ahead. Yes. So. Getting people on board to new platforms, new concepts can be really hard. So how did you get about that, um, introducing churches to Alter Live? What were your successes and challenges? How'd you get people excited? Can you touch on that? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, um, if you look at what happened uh, at uh, COVID, so I'm still very close to a lot of people at Life Church, and you probably mm -hmm. know that Life Church gives away its platform, right? Yep. So mm -hmm. I was I was uh, right when the, like the first week of um, uh, complete lockdown. I was in Europe and I was talking to my friend Terry Storch, and um, 
I said, and they said, David, you won't believe this. Um, like 4,500 people have signed up for the Life Church platform. <laughs> and I said, and the total number of people who would make that work would be ooh, seven, maybe four, <laughs> five, you know, um, because there's what we used to call some assembly required. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> and basically, if you never worked for Cisco, forget it. You, know, you, have, you have no possibility. If you don't know a lot about IP transfer and internet mm -hmm. working, <laughs> forget it. Anyway, so um, uh, churches got in there and they said, oh, this is too hard. So mm -hmm. they said, oh, we can fix this. I'm going to get an iPhone. Yep. And I'm going to stick it on a tripod right in front of my congregation. And they did. And they stuck it in front of the congregation and they showed the whole service on. And for three weeks, people said, this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And at the third week, it went boom, fell straight through the floor. It was over. <laughs> History. Yep. And people are going, what happened? I said, look, the one thing you didn't factor in here is um, you did Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you didn't realize that there were 142,000 other churches at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning doing Facebook Live. Oh, yeah. And you know what? Your people suddenly discovered that there's some people doing it way better than you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you know what? They went there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they left you. <laughs> and they're not coming back. <laughs> um, and uh, quickly, people, and then, uh, of course, then it fell even further because nobody's mm -hmm. going to interact on Facebook. Because right. if you do, they know who you mm -hmm. are. Right. And they're like, who is this pervert? <laughs> <laughs> they go, uh, probably not. So we're not going to do that. So then it really just completely cratered and, and people, they started just throwing their iPhones away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, <"Look at> this. <laughs> this really sucks. <laughs> what do we do now? <laughs> and um, and um, so wh wherever I went, I've c just continued to uh, harp on this theme of engagement, you know, engagement, mm. engagement, engagement, because that, you know, that's the thing that, that makes the whole thing go around. And, right. um, and so, um, how do we get people on it? So I, I, I we, we start and we say, okay, clearly, you know, you've got to do something. Um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I'm looking out at your church on Sunday morning and there is a vast quantity of emptiness out there. <laughs> vast quantity <laughs> so uh, you know you need to do something and um the the digital capability of people today is quite high you know it's not mm -hmm. like you know when i was younger and it was more difficult um so the digital capability is high and so um we get we just bring people in and say look we're going to be doing this um they're doing an online service where you can really engage with people and you know little information evening and see who signs up and who signs not so um, uh, uh, Fellowship in Springfield is a church of um, average Sunday attendance of six or 700 amongst all the services. So um, database of 20,000, city of 60,000, mm -hmm. enormous opportunity to, to serve, build, grow. And, mm -hmm. and, so, uh, and so I bring them in and I say, look, um, the first thing you need to understand here is if you want to be part of this and part of this group, um, we, we are here to engage and the only way you can engage is if you personally have an awesome walk with Jesus mm. and mm. you have to be willing to be part of this because um, this is for, first and foremost way more important than yeah. um, the actual hosting bit. So, um, so our team is a group of sort of three people so, or three groups. So there's one who people who do the hosting and um, they're in the team. And the second is the sound mixing people and they're in a separate room. And so we do the hosting in a room at the church, um, not in the sanctuary, uh, in a separate room. Um, and then there's a group of sound mixing people. And then there's um, a, a third group, which was the video people who do the stuff in the back of the church, you know, work the soundboard and all that other stuff. So it's really three separate groups of people. Um, so for the hosts, I said, I, I had very high standard about um, uh, your computer literacy. So mm -hmm. you've got to be able to um, multitask. And so we, we each, each person who does the hosting has between two and three screens. So um, you've got to be familiar with how that works and you've got to be comfortable 
with doing that. I mean, Life Church had dumbed everything down to where they were allowing hosts to do hosting on an iPhone. Yep. So mm-hmm. This is a complete waste of space because yep. you, you can't actually engage with people. Yep. Right? Right. I mean, that's just plain stupid. Yep. So I, I have I sort of separated it out into five tiers of things that have to occur. So, um, so the first tier of things is that everybody's got to be on the daily devotional bit. Hmm. And, uh, and I lead that and bring everyone through that. And, um, uh, and that, that's incredibly important because one of the things that Barna said, oh, must have been about two years ago, is um, the reason the Christian population has no power in the world that we live in is because they spend an average of 12.2 minutes a week reading the Bible. That's nuts. Um, and that includes Sunday morning. That's that crazy. That includes Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> and 2.2 minutes praying. I said, no, that's not us. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a minimum 30 minutes a day. And if you can't commit to that, don't don't join. Don't mm. be part of it. Mm. Um, so uh, and then we pray together before we start. And um, <laughs> the, the the minister, Jeremy Hudson, you know, he, he I think he was a little unsure. He, I mean, he, he asked me to do this. He was kind of a little unsure about it. So um, uh, he has to be part of it. You know, so he has to come in and be part of the pre- uh, you know the pre-game meeting and all that other stuff so um the uh, the second tier of things that we do is we um and this is a great great feature about the altar platform is you can have these windows in these rooms so we have a room slash window open for all of our groups at the same time because they're not in the same room hmm. so um so the sound guys they're in the room and the guys in the back of the auditorium they're in the room and all the hosts are in the room and that's on one of their screens and so if i'm in london i'm which i am this weekend or i was last weekend you know i'm in the room just like everyone else um so it cuts through that uh, you know geographical separation issue um, you know, which is really, really good. Um, and uh, so my third tier of things that we do is we we prepare all the announcements up front and we agree the timing on those. And um, and we also you what we we <laughs> stole not really stole the prayer resources stuff from Life Church. That's which borrowed. They give out That's okay. Well. <laughs> um, so, yeah, exactly. Which is really, really excellent. It's like the best going because. If, if someone calls and says, or, or texts and messages and says, um, I have cancer, what do I do? Mm. Um, mm. You want to be able to intelligently answer that. Right. Um, so there's 22, 23 topics. And um, so we have, and that has been invaluable in helping people learn how to pray for others. And, um, you know, because, you know, people are willing to say things um, when they're not in person that they wouldn't possibly say mm. <laughs> when they were in person um right. and you got to be ready for that um so so we have all of that stuff prepped and ready and then uh, i get the people who are preaching to have their sermon notes for us because mm. we aim to post anywhere from 10 to 15 times during the service to in- awesome. help engage people so they can say what do you think about this yeah. what do you think about that i love I mean, that the, the, well the platform has the ability to do polls and stuff like that that's nonsense right now until people learn more how to engage, right. yep. you know, using this. So, so we don't even get near there. Um, and then the fifth tier um, is uh, we, uh, we capture a list of things that we did right, things we did wrong, and we have an eval after the meeting. So, you know, we, um, I mean, you can post those if you want, you know, in your show notes and, you know, what you're doing. I would love so, to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to post them if you want, but you know, so that's what we do. But um, you know, we we do like, um, and and we have uh, for all of our communication during the week, we have a Slack group that everyone is in. So we use Slack, Mm -hmm. and we use Evernote, um, so we can freeform make the notes. So um, you know, nothing's written in a book. Everything is digital. Everything is open for change. So we we're reevaluating, you know, sort of almost every week what we're doing but it, it's kind of settled down now into those five mm. tiers of things we do um and you know is it being effective well we, you know we pick up more and more people each week you know and but you know in the old game um the the um i i have been in a position where i've had the opportunity to question real senior people in the preaching business 
Um, you, all of you, if, if I ask you, is disciple making important? Oh, absolutely, yes. And I, so I say, you know, well, what's your plan? <laughs> Show me. Now, now, well, I said, I, you don't even have to answer the question because I already know what your plan is. Um, you, your entire disciple making plan can be summed up in two words. They say two words, come back. Yep. Mm. Your Nichols plan is come back. Yeah, with well, the nickels and noses and, you know, that's what they, but it's all about coming back. But mm. they didn't factor in what would happen if there's no back to come to. Yep. <laughs> Well, the, the comeback day, it's over. Broadcast cycle, over. Um, you know, it, it, I, I was telling a minister this the other day. I said, you know, whatever it is you're going to preach on on Sunday morning, first of all, I can guarantee a thousand of other people have already preached on it. Mm. And, and I said, don't take this wrong, but most of them are a lot better than you are. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I said, David, do you, do you offend everyone? I said, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I love that. I mean, truth you know, to power, we, man. Truth to power. Yeah, exactly. You know, well, people do things that you, you know you wouldn't imagine. You know, so when we were um, at at the U version, when we were first getting involved, uh, now this, so this is like a little more than five years ago, with the whole idea of um, the the devotional plans. Because the devotional part was that was really my big thing. I mean, that was what I was really um, big on. I mean, today is twelve thousand devotions. So, and, you know, nuts. It's, ways that, it's, yeah, it's completely nuts. But uh, so we said, you know, we need to get a devotional to help new Christians get started. Mm. And they were like, yeah, yeah. Who are you going to talk to? <laughs> David calls Billy Graham. <laughs> oh my gosh! He says, "Sure, I'll do that." Oh my gosh! Just that Billy <laughs> Graham. Is it, oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. I'm, does he know me? Did I know him? I, I, it took me a long time just to get the phone number for the place. I love it. I... <laughs> but I mean, that was only like a year or two before he died, you know. Um, mm. and, uh, and and his 15 day devotional for new Christians, best one you'll ever see. Oh yeah, I've best. I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it. It's awesome. Have you? Yeah, oh yeah. 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 I mean, it's the best you'll ever see. But I, I I suppose my life has been based around doing things that most of the other people in the world would only really think about doing and only roughly think about doing. <laughs> <laughs> but not me. I, you know, I get out there and, um, you know, uh, you know, just do it, you know. So that's been uh, that's been the life of the big dog. So um, so that's how we uh, that's a little bit about me. That's how we handle the, the altar platform. Um, we, we don't have the secret sauce um, mm. because there's no secret sauce. But what there is is a continual focus on engagement hmm. yes. and, and not just the people on the other side of the screen it's engagement with my team yep. engagement right. with my people engagement 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 because there's one word that will sum up everything jesus did on the earth engagement mm, absolutely <laughs> that's what it, we talk about so that's a anyway that's a that's a mic drop moment right there. Uh, that is a mic drop. So real quick, the, the question I, want, I guess I want to ask you is, you've been working with Fellowship, you've been doing that. How how tough was it to roll into these tiers with your team? Was there an initial pushback? Was there a general acceptance? Did you soft roll it? Did you tear the Band-Aid off? Like, what was your what was your strategy there? I, I didn't tell them anything. Okay. Great. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I just said, we're going to do this. Now, you see, in the, in the land, they have this old saying in the technology business that in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Mm. So <laughs> if, if you know anything, there's a chance that you know a lot more than everybody else. Amen. And you can look like you really know something, whether you actually do or not is another story. <laughs> but but um, I, I wasn't completely green here in terms of, how to do what we're doing in terms of reaching across um, through a screen to people, because I mean, I had been doing it for five years, um, you know, with Life Church, and you know, but I mean, very, very different because it was text only, and hmm. um, you know, you couldn't really make any personal connections um, with any of the people. Um, but you know, I, I just started applying the things I knew. And did a lot of work and a lot of research, and um, literally just took things one step at a time, one mm. step at a time, and you know there we went. So that was okay, it. 
Cool. That's that's awesome. How big is the team over at Fellowship, if you don't mind me asking? The the hosts, um, there's four or five of us okay. um, that are, uh, and, uh, and and the really bizarre thing is, um, <laughs> what if you're doing something in a church and you're like down the hall from where everything is, people start going, what oh, are yeah. you doing down there? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who cares? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and, and people want to be part of something yep. that that they don't know about. Amen. Just because they, yeah. they have this fear of missing out in churches. I'm like, right. hey, that's the real world thing. That's not churches. Oh, yeah. Big time. 100%. Um, yeah, yeah. So we've got this um, queue of people who say, can we join you? Can we join you? And first thing I say is, no, not yet. <laughs> um <laughs> You're not qualified. <laughs> they go, what? I want to join well, I even believe more. in Jesus. <laughs> exactly. And then I want it even more. It's bizarre. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, yeah. I mean, we have we have loads of people um, in all different ages too. You hmm. know, um, and the, fortunately, we've gotten some very good um, technical people. A couple of the hosts are actual programmers in real life. Mm, wow. So, um, so that has been really helpful. But I'm able to help these people in terms of I'm able to engage with them because I'm primarily a technical person myself. Mm. So um, I, you know, I can talk about uh, JavaScript and HTML and Python yep. and um, you know how the languages work and how the programming works and. You know, I can talk about, you know, with Stephanie and Pablo and Andrew about, you know, the socket layers and the, the, you know, the seven layer um, stack and how the stack works and what goes where and how mm -hmm. it does. And, you know, that non technical people go, ah! and they start <laughs> throwing off you know, in different directions. Um, but, you know, uh, it's just um, the, the technical people who are there want to be part of being around people who actually have done it, have been there, you know, yep. um, it, not like in a mentoring sort of way, but, you know, I'm able to steer them in a lot of things because they come to me with questions uh, about, you know, we're programming this and we're going to do the design, the system design for this and this and this and this. And I'll say, look, this is really easy. Go here. And they go, oh, that's mm -hmm. all. I said, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, when you're an old fart like me, then you, you actually see how things actually work. And then you can um, you can help people, so that's cool. That's awesome, uh, Maeve. Before I ask my last final bombshell of a question, do you have anything else for Mr. David Allen? I don't. I just wanted to say how much like I appreciate you talking about the engagement behind the scenes. I think we're always trying to show the importance of the team behind, like the host and the greeters, the team behind. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. everything because that really makes it all work so to hear how oh, you yeah. space everything out by tiers was just so amazing yeah, yeah. to hear um oh, because yeah it was it's awesome to hear and it encourages us because you know we're t saying we're kind of honing in on this teams are really important and to see that yeah, oh, yeah. they are and we're actually you know speaking truth to that is really awesome to hear and you were so systematic and yeah. it's so digestible to hear so i think a lot of people will be able to use what you said and apply it to their own churches Definitely. which is just really helpful for everyone well, all around you, you, so you've really got to be that. able to systematize things and make it yeah. so that people i mean um my, you know people people just look at technology and they go ah throw their arms up and run away <laughs> um, which which is is a reasonable um you know mm -hmm. view um but you need to, my skill, if you will, is my skill is being able to take very, very complex things and break them down so that my, my favorite phrase, my favorite phrase with people is, oh, I can do that. Hmm. I can do that. <laughs> and you want to get people into the position where they say, oh, I can do that. Mm. And that makes it work, you know, so that's the um, I, I tell you, if you want to read any, go through any devotional, uh, the only guy who's um, uh, dealt with this issue is um, a guy named Jay Lee Whittington. And Jay Lee, he's the, I think he's the dean of the business school at the University of Dallas. Um, and he did this devotional um, called The Leadership Secrets of the Apostle Paul. Oh, yeah. He's like mm -hmm. the only guy who's done this, right? Yep. Um, 
and it's 30 days so most people you know uh, don't go through the whole 30 days which but i mean this is the best because mm. um he talks repeatedly through there about the concept of among them mm. paul got among them so my what do i do i get among them yeah um mm. i you know i roll my sleeves straight up like everybody else does and um you know I, I i i show everyone here's how you use two screens and here's how you make this work and then they all go oh i could do that mm. um and that's the secret to it um it, because you know this isn't about how good you are or how much you know uh, that's just pointless yep mm. this is about having people say i could do that <laughs> and that is the like that should be like your mic dropping phrase i could do that yep absolutely that's awesome. um anyway okay so i have one final question before we log the off the last final question yeah we've kept you for way too long and i apologize for that <laughs> this right. has been an, a fan that fascinating conversation and thanks everybody for joining in with us david um going back and forth between ohio and the london area i put this in the show notes do you call it football or do you call it soccer no, football is football. Foot, football is football. This American thing. Oh, yes. It's a travesty. It's that's called <laughs> throwball. It's a uh, <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, it's uh, not football. Exactly. Um, and do you have a team or a club that you support? I do. Uh, I follow Tottenham Hotspur. I am so um, sorry for you. And no, I love Same as well. The Spurs, go Spurs. Uh, anyway, that's, that's fine. I, 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 I that. yeah, I don't know about that either because. I Maeve and I really have some strong is... opinions. Well, no, you, and you, you say follow? your opinions you first. <laughs> I yeah, I have followed Chelsea Football Club since the year of our Lord two thousand five. I know we're in a bit of a patch right now. Um, bit of a patch. They're going to be deported to Russia. <laughs> well, their owner is yes. Uh, but I yes, I have followed them through thick and thin since two thousand five. They chose me. I. I played hockey growing up my entire life. I I played hockey for like oh, 18 right. years, well, and if then you're, if you're from Michigan. That's what you play. exactly. I was skating when I was three years old, and so I sat mm -hmm. down one day and I played soccer, football. Uh, yeah. But I never really like got into it. And as I got older, uh, I I'm a pastor as well, and I so I was sitting down with somebody, and I said, okay. I'm going to do this. I'm going to watch an entire Premier League weekend, and I'm going to let a team pick me. And in 2005, <laughs> Chelsea Football Club was playing Arsenal, and a guy by the name uh, of Joe Cole put in a cross uh, to my favorite player, yeah. Frank Lampard. Frank Lampard uh, headed it home, and it was then I looked at I looked at the friend next to me on the couch, and I said, that's my team right that's, there. That's and that was it. Team, right? wow. And it's been over. Ever, it, and I bleed them, unfortunately. You bleed the blue then. I bleed blue. And it's unfortunate that I do because everybody calls me lots of names. And especially right now. Um, I would call you names. I know. I know. We call you guys on our on our Chelsea Reddit. We call you guys things too. And it's all in love. It's banter, right? It's I, banter. I tell you what is, what is weird is, um, okay, so we just took this stadium that used to be, was the Olympic Stadium. Yep. So we, we bought that and refurbished it and done it. But we were at the stadium called White Hart Lane mm -hmm. for like a hundred years. Eons, yeah. Um, and, and this isn't like an American stadium, White Hart Lane. I mean, it was really old school. I mean, it was at, take take Fenway Park and wind it back about fifty years before then because it was really bad. Mm. Um, and when when you, the the when you were sitting on the field, you were on the field like you know two meters away from the touchline. I mean, it was amazing, and. Um, the fans are just wild. Oh yeah. Anyway, now we're in this Olympic stadium and you have to behave and they have, you know, just sort of social distancing and they, you know, they have an app and you can huh? order things on the app. Yep. Like, what's that about? Yep. That's not football. Yep. Well, at least you guys <laughs> can order things. Apparently they're giving everything away for free at Stanford Bridge. So, cause they have to, cause they can't yeah, make any money. Because <laughs> nobody will come. <laughs> 
exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, really uh, enjoyed being with you guys today. It was really fun. David, thanks uh, so much. Maeve, thank so you so much for being here. We're going to we're gonna wrap up here, everybody, on the Ultra Live Show. Thanks so much. You can always catch everything that we're doing on demand at uh, youtube.com slash ultra live, ultra live.com. Uh, we will hopefully be getting some of our some of the tier stuff that David was talking ab about into the show notes and possibly into a blog on ultralive.com. David, once again, from across the pond, thank you so much. Yeah, God bless you guys. God bless you. Have we'll a great see, day. We'll see everybody. Yeah, see you.